evening. Tonight we visit the tiny village of Woodburn for a tale of terror and suspense. The 21st century has brought with it many opportunities for progress and good works. But along with the good has come the bad, such as an alarming increase in stalker-related crimes. Yet despite these dangers, some people continue to lead lives so free of threat they forget the cruel hand of fate may strike at any moment. Our story tonight proves this point in deadly fashion, as college freshman Taylor Hoffman is about to discover at the midnight hour. stopping here. Well, there's going to be a lot of people at the movies, so I just thought I could spend some alone time with you first. Really? Uh-huh. Maybe we shouldn't. What are you talking about? Why not? Well, it's too quiet and there's no one around. That's the whole idea. No, <laughs> really. <laughs> this place gives me the creeps. How can it? It's broad daylight. Does it matter? I mean, just look around. All those dead trees and like a hundred places where someone could be hiding. Just <laughs> watching us and waiting. Waiting for what? I don't know. And I don't want to know. <laughs> Molly, what the hell are you talking about? You've been acting a little weird all day. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'm sorry. Okay. What is it? What did I do this time? <laughs> nothing. Really. Nothing. It's not you. Okay, great. It's not me. Then what is your problem? I think someone is after me. Think what? Okay. So you know those big windows we have at the clinic? Yeah. Well, the reception desk faces them, and I can see almost the entire parking lot. And the other day there was this guy standing out there for hours just watching me. Well, who was he? One of the patients? I don't know. He was wearing a ski mask. Well, did you call the police or something? No, I mean... He wasn't doing anything. I just thought he was waiting for an appointment with Dr. Rhodes. So, what happened? Well, closing time hit, and he was still out there. I mean, no one, nothing was in the parking lot except for him. I had this feeling he was waiting for me to leave. What did you do? Well, Dr. Rhodes was in back cleaning up, so... I went back there and told him that there was some creep in the parking lot. So he walked me to the doors, but by the time we got there, the guy was gone. Okay. Come on, Molly. I mean, yeah, that is a little creepy, but that's nothing to be so stressed about. But that's not where it ends. The very next day, I had lunch at that little bistro on 11th Street, and I sat by the window and saw him again. The same guy, ski mask and all. Yes, he just stood there across the street watching me like a lunatic. Well, maybe he is a lunatic. Maybe, maybe he's one of Dr. Rhodes' patients and he's got a little thing for you. Okay, Connor, you're not helping. <sighs> Sorry. So what happened this time? Well, I was scared to leave because obviously this guy had been following me. So, I went and back to see if there was, like, a manager or higher authority that could walk me to the door. But when I got to the door, the guy was gone. Again. Just like before. Yes, except for one thing. There was a chunk of red hair tied to my car door handle. I have red hair, Connor. 
I think this guy has some kind of fetish. But he hasn't actually tried to threaten you or touch you, right? He hasn't had the chance. I don't go anywhere alone. But you're alone now. And there's nothing to be afraid of, okay? Just relax. I'm just too tense, Connor. Maybe I can help with that. Say something. Nothing you say can shock me. I might even get turned on. Hello? Oliver, will you Somebody turn the thing in? off? I'm trying to study. No. We'll turn it down then. I hate horror movies. So go study somewhere else. I'm older than you. I get to study wherever I want. Then live on campus if all you want to do is study. This is our house. I don't have to live on campus if I don't want to. This is my house too. This is my house too. Shut up! It's past your bedtime. Besides, you shouldn't be watching this crap. It'll give you nightmares. No, it won't. Yes, it will. Then when Mom and Dad get back from vacation, you'll tell them you're too scared to turn out the lights in your room, and they'll blame us. How come? Because Wyatt and me are in charge of you while they're gone, stupid ass. Wyatt, Taylor, call me stupid ass. Taylor, don't call all of us stupid ass. That is disgusting. How can you watch that? Easy. It's just a movie. Besides, things like that don't happen in real life, unless you're a moron. I don't know, Oliver. A thing like that can get you in big, big trouble someday. We interrupt this program to bring you breaking news from the Channel 6 News team. A young couple was assaulted late this afternoon in a tiny rural village of Woodbourne. 22-year-old Molly Fenton was parked with her boyfriend near Haynes Avenue when they were pulled out of their car and beaten with a lead pipe. Miss Fenton escaped uninjured, but her boyfriend, whose identity is being withheld by the police, was killed in the attack. The killer is described as a male wearing a black leather jacket and camouflage pants with a ski mask pulled over his face. See what I mean, Oliver? That's it. No more. I can't stand hearing about stuff like that. Boy, how can a major bitch like you be such a scaredy cat? Excuse me? What did you just call me? A scaredy cat. Hey, Colt. I didn't even know it was snowing today. Yeah, it snowed. A lot. Hey, Colt. Hey, how you doing? Taylor, your dream boy is here. Oliver, shut up. If you say one uncool word about me to Colt, I will put you to bed and there will be no TV tomorrow. Do you understand? Blah, blah, blah. Do you understand? Hey, Colt. Taylor wants to know if you brought any condoms. Wyatt! I want him out of here! All right, all right. Come on, buddy, let's go. It's way past your bedtime anyways. Look, my sister's got a lot of good qualities. And I just can't think what they are right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you forgot something. Condoms? Beer. Oh, uh, I thought you picked it up. How are we supposed to play poker without beer, man? Well, at least let me borrow your car. I walked here tonight. Okay, Oliver, get some sleep. If it wasn't for stupid Taylor, I could stay up. You know, some battles just aren't worth fighting. I'm sick of her bossing me around. She's a nag hag. You know, tell me something I don't know. Look, get some rest, go to sleep, stop worrying about it. I don't want to leave her downstairs with Colt. She is constantly hitting on him, and it creeps him out. I know where we can make her super mad. Why would I want to do that? She's hard enough to live with as it is. It'll be fun. Besides, if she gets mad enough, maybe she'll finally move out and live on campus. Oh my god, I have been trying to do that for months. And so has mom and dad. Why do you think they went on vacation without us? Because she's a pain in the ass. Right. So what's the plan?
I'm taking written communications 101 this semester. Written communications? <laughs> Big fun. <laughs> I know. For midterms, we have to write a 750-word narrative fiction essay. I'm really jazzed about mine. You're jazzed about writing an essay? Wow, Taylor, that says a lot. <laughs> so does my essay. My teacher said to write it from my heart so it would be real. I guess that makes sense. It's about this guy who falls in love with his best friend's sister. Taylor, he's not interested. Why don't you take your junk and go study someplace else? You're ignorant. And you're annoying. So we're even. Dude, don't ever leave me alone with that chick. I thought she was gonna ask me to marry her. Again. Well, why don't we have some fun tonight and maybe make Taylor so that she decides to live on campus. I was better than playing poker. Down, you'll wake Oliver. He's out there. Who, Oliver? No, the murderer on the news, the guy wearing the ski mask. I saw him. Where? He was right out there. I saw his shadow, and then he was right by the window. Is this some kind of trick to make Colt notice you? No, I screamed, and then he ran that way. Toward the back door. Why? He's gonna try and get in the house. Where's Colt? I sent him to get beer. You what? Wyatt, that couple was just attacked in Woodburn. That's four miles from here. If they don't catch that guy, nobody's safe. God, you're just full of surprises. Meaning what? Meaning you don't mind demoralizing everybody with your attitude, but when you think Colt is in danger, then you turn to Mother Teresa. I'm telling you- You're telling- No, nothing. There's nothing left there. Wyatt? Please come back in here. Just like I thought, nothing. I know what I saw. I don't know what it is with you, Taylor. Either you're trying to be the center of attention or you're hallucinating mass murders because you saw a news report. Either way, it's stupid. Wyatt, please come back in here so I can lock the door. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I got a couple broken neck bones, but I'm doing good. You got some pretty big guns there, buddy. That was so awesome, she totally fell for it. I know, her scream was worth the price of admission. Okay, so what do we do now? I have an idea. I hit her cell phone and I took the batteries out of the house phone. Go wait behind the SUV and let's see if we can give her one last jolt. Okay. Oliver, Oliver, wake up, I need to use your phone. What? Where's your phone, you idiot? It's an emergency, somebody's trying to kill us. It's at school. I forgot and left it at my desk. Well, that was a stupid thing to do. Dad got you that phone for emergencies. You're supposed to keep it with you at all times. Idiot! Wait until you find out it's just Colt. What happened? 
happened? He was choking me so hard I couldn't break free. So I played possum hoping he'd let go. I used the key under the mat to get in. I thought you were dead. I really did. The phone isn't working. I, I think it needs a new battery. I think I left my cell phone on the charger in the car. Do you think he's still out there? I didn't see him. Colt, where are you, man? my keys. Taylor, are you in there? Oliver? <gasps> oh my god, are you okay? Sure I am. Are you using the bathroom? No, no I'm not. Open the door. Yes, yes. Someone here to see you. In the end, Oliver's practical joke took on a malignant life of its own as he admitted a killer into the house whom he mistook for a friend. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's story. Relive the fear every week 
at the same time. And join us again next month for an all-new episode of The Midnight Hour.